Okay, now on to the best. No, it's not the best, but it's a great render. I think this is one that most, if not all, users will end up touching at some point or another. It is the volume render. And you can see Vapor's logo, this V, this is a volume rendering. It's applying color and opacity to an entire 3D volume of space. So it's great for things like smoke, clouds. Um, we've had users use it for vorticity. Anything that's in a 3D field um, can be shown effectively with the volume render. So um, I'll spin Vapor up like I have been doing. I will launch Vapor from the command line. A uh, typical user will launch it from the desktop icon or the icon stored wherever uh, they install Vapor on their file system. And, oops, that's a different data set. I will be doing this uh, Dooku data set that we have right here as a, one of our test data sets. But I'll be doing Harvey um, to stick with the theme of this tutorial series. All right, so we have our Vapor window. I'll maximize it and create an image renderer so we have context of where we are in space. Enable it, go to my region, and expand it. Okay, turn off my box. New volume renderer, second from the bottom, right here. And off the bat, I'll just turn it on. And we can see we have a pretty uh, opaque cuboid of our variable cloud fraction over here. Now, the volume renderer is probably the, uh, it depends the most on the transfer function. So I'll go over to the appearance tab and open up my transfer function. We can see that we have opacity applied to all data values within our volume. And what that means is that we cannot see through the outside uh, perimeter of our domain. And anyway, every single data value is completely opaque and we can't see through the data. So it's important for us to apply some opacity. We can drag the opacity sliders down. And as we begin masking more and more of our data, the more we get to see through the volume. And um, yeah, I mean, as simple as that, we have a volume rendering of cloud fraction of Hurricane Harvey. Um, the transfer function works the same way as it does for all the other renderers. Um, one thing, like the ISO surface renderer, we can go to our region manipulator and cut through and see a discrete slice right there. So if we want to see what the eye wall of the hurricane is doing, we can see it like that. If I, um, I guess it might be interesting to, to show the similarities between the volume render and the ISO surface render, because they're using the same uh, rendering algorithm, more or less. So I'll make a, an ISO surface render. Let's just check this out. And it'll be cloud fraction as well. And I will turn off my volume, enable it, uh, enable the ISO surface render, turn off my region. And I'm going to go to my geometry tab for my ISO surface renderer and copy the extents of my volume renderer that we see right here. So I'll click on that. And I'm going to copy the extents. And so now we have the same cross section that we just defined for a volume renderer. And I can come over here and kind of look into the inside of my ISO surface. Now, <clears throat> what might be interesting, let's go to appearance, and we're looking at a data value of 0.5. If I go to my volume renderer, turn off my ISO surface, turn on my volume, I can specify, let's see, uh, if I go to 0.49 there, and then here I go to, let's see, now let's go, okay, you will come up, I'll maximize this opacity, and you will go to 0.4849-ish. If I define kind of an impulse of, of opacity so that only this section of data is opaque, then I kind of start to replicate an ISO surface. So, so volume rendering is an ISO surface, but at a wider spread of values. Um, you, can, you can effectively generate an ISO surface with a volume rendering, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, but you can also increase the spread so that your volume rendering has an actual thickness to it, which I'm not sure if you guys can see right there. Um, another thing that you can do with the volume renderer is, like the ISO surface renderer, you can color map it to another variable. So right now what we're doing is we're applying color and opacity according to the primary variable cloud fraction. I can color my, my volume rendering according to another variable. So if I pick temperature, 
and I go to my appearance tab, I can color it according to temperature. So right now our opacity is being defined by our transfer function for cloud fraction, but our color is being applied according to the temperature. And I can adjust the um, color application just like we would in any other renderer. Like the isosurface renderer, we have some ray tracing parameters, uh, curvilinear and regular um, ray tracing, um, train following grids with WERF uh, are curvilinear grids, so you're going to want to use curvilinear, which are supported by discrete graphics cards. If you have an old Intel card, it might default to regular. Uh, sampling rate multiplier, most users don't have to worry about it, but if um, they want to crank it up, they can. Your rendering will take a little bit longer, but I don't know, it's pretty quick right there. But then again, I am looking at a very compressed um, representation of the data. If I crank this up to high, to perfect reconstruction of this very, very, very large grid, then um, my sampling rate multiplier would compound the time it takes to get an effective rendering. Uh, moving on down the list, volume density is kind of like a global opacity um, value that's applied. So if I, if, I if I just brought that down to 0.42 and we have more of a like smoky, wispy uh, rendering that has uh, basically a universal transparency value applied to all points in the volume rendering. And then finally, there's the lighting parameters. Um, I, I say always just stick with the defaults on this one. It's probably your best bet. Moving over to the geometry tab, uh, same thing as with all the other renderers. You control the region um, of data that you are pulling from disk and rendering. Um, Volume rendering and all 3D rendering probably takes, it definitely takes the uh, most amount of RAM. So if your computer is, um, is memory bound, then reducing the region that, of your data that you're drawing uh, can help with that. Uh, copying regions, uh, we just did that with the isosurface renderer and scales, translations, rotations. All these transforms work the same way and uh, same goes for the uh, color bar that we enable and disable um, as usual. So, yeah, volume renderer. It's a computationally heavy um, renderer in vapor, but it's also one of the most beautiful. So I think everyone who's touching vapor will probably get their hands onto the volume renderer uh, at some point in time. Let's see, I think we're wrapping up all of our renderers. I think next we have, whoops, we have wireframe. Shoot, I'm bogging down my computer. Uh, what we have left are wireframe, flow, and I believe model renderer. And that will cover the current renderers that are supported in Vapor 3.2. So next I will go into a wireframe and then wrap everything up with the flow renderer.